Chapter 6, Episode 4 Luxation, Anatomy Practice and Divine Art Practice November 1147 One morning Lot and Falma barged into Blanche's room in the de Medici's family mansion. Not openly, but anxiously. How are you? I'm sorry. Miss Eleanor, I brought you a snack. In the room, Blanche and Ellen sat across from each other at a wooden table and distributed their tasks. Ellen sat next to Blanche and excitedly instructed her. What is this? A snack already? We just started our lesson. Ellen, who was teaching Blanche, smiled wryly. How does Blanche learn? Blanche seemed to have lost comprehension of the calculations and was twirling the pen with her finger. No matter how you look at it, Falma's face is on the verge of being bored, but in front of Ellen, he seems to be holding back. Yes. Miss, how was the math quiz? Did you prove your ability? Lot, who is good at arithmetic, taught Blanche the day before, who got into trouble when she heard there was a quiz. It wasn't good. Blanche closes her eyes tightly and makes a cross. Lot's hard work didn't seem to pay off. It's not good? Please eat snacks and do your best. Falma Sama's textbook says your brain needs sugar. Lot serves snacks and encourages Blanche. Even among Falma's pharmacy textbooks, Lot clearly remembered only the parts related to food. You came out of curiosity to see Falma Kuhn, Lot Chen, and Blanche Chen, didn't you? Ellen pointed out as she picked up some candy. Well, because Blanche is my younger sister. I'm curious. But Ellen knows better about divine arts and can teach you about gynecology. Ah, uh, maybe Falma Kuhn wanted to teach you directly? Blanche Chan study. About half of them were figure stars. Ellen seems to have an idea. I can't. It's hard with more work, but please take care of your sister Ellen. With Bruno's order, Blanche officially became Ellen's student. Bruno, Valma and Pal can teach Blanche but siblings tend to be overbearing and selfish, so it's not a good teacher-student relationship. Bruno's intention is that it is better to have someone else teach him so that he can maintain a moderate sense of tension. In order to become an apothecary who can deal with women's diseases in the future, it was decided that it would be better to become an apprentice to a female apothecary who has the same water attribute. Blanche Chen, let's stop studying for today, have a snack and go to the training of divine arts, she said. Ellen invited Blanche. Love. Apart from studying, Blanche, who had above average knowledge of divine arts, corrected her mood and nodded with a smile. It's been a long time since I gave a student a private lesson in divine arts. Ellen and Blanche seem to have something to teach. Ellen is a caring person. Hey, a student who called me taught me. When Falma heard that, Falma was completely forgotten by Ellen, so he pointed and complained. Ellen shook her head left and right. Someone who can use divine arts without chanting and manipulate divine arts at will is not counted as a disciple. Basically, what I taught you can hardly be used in your divine arts. Apparently, Ellen no longer considered Falma his disciple. I still think of Ellen as my teacher. Ellen seemed a little surprised at Falma's statement. Oh, what's the matter, Ellen? Hold your shoulder. A few hours later, while Falma was going about his usual work at the pharmacy, Ellen returned to the pharmacy, exhausted. He looks unusually lazy, his face is pale, and he is sweating cold sweat. Does your shoulder hurt? Falma stopped his writing hand and asked. Elian or Sama, you look pale, Dane. Are you feeling sick? Would you like some tea? The part-time pharmacists dispensing medicine, Roger and Selst, were also concerned and supportive of Ellen's body. Ellen clenched her teeth as if trying to bear the pain. Thank you very much to all of you. Please help me, Falma Kuhn. When I was practicing divine arts with Blanche Chen, Blanche Chen went off the track of divine arts. When I tried to follow it, I got into a strange position and my shoulder dislodged. I tried to administer first aid myself, but it didn't work. Is this the first time your shoulder has come loose? Sometimes it comes out. It seems he was trying to force it on, and it seemed to hurt him instead. Is it a recurrent dislocation? 
Thelma examined Ellen's shoulder condition with his diagnostic eye. And when he confirmed that it was indeed a dislocation of the right shoulder joint, he brought it upstairs and placed him face down on the treatment table. How do you dress it? Ellen demands an explanation. Try hanging your arm vertically under the table. As instructed by Thelma, Ellen half-doubtingly extended her arm under the treatment table. Hey, can't you put it on? Ellen, who seemed to think it could be accomplished by force, looked up from the bed at Thelma in displeasure. Thelma reassured Ellen. It will fit, so do as I say. Relax. Relax. Uff. It hurts and makes me stiff. As Falma stroked Ellen's spine, Falma attached a bracelet-like weight to Ellen's arm, which eventually weakened. It's quite heavy. Wait a minute, Falma Coon, what are you doing? It's okay, it's okay. I ask Ellen to rest in the same position for a while. Has enough time passed? Falma confirmed the condition of Ellen's arm and nodded that it was fine. Wake up slowly, it's okay. Oh, I'm hooked. Along the reduction say Fuku you can do it, so remember. Oh, you've got a nerve damage. Stretch out your shoulders. Falma raised his index finger and put it on Ellen's bare shoulder, blow divine power into the nerves of his body to heal the injury. Then apply a poultice with a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory analgesic. Ah, uh, thank you. No, Ellen did the repositioning herself. I didn't do anything. I did first aid but the damage isn't completely healed, so it's better to rest for a while. Ellen sighed and looked startled. It can't be like that. Tomorrow I have divine art training, and tomorrow is the real fight. I have to be healed by tomorrow, no matter what. You should stop tomorrow. Should I finally give Ellen's lecture? Ellen's work was increasing and Falma was taking care of him because he had injured himself while participating in Blanche's training. Practice is real combat training with the instructor. I'm sorry to say this, but Falma Kuhn, you can't compete with students. I'm going to faint. Ellen remembered something she didn't want to remember and admonished Falma in advance. 33 million foreign, about 600 million Japanese yen, was incurred as repair costs, which Falma remembers well. Paying high repair costs was already a lesson. Okay. Instead of competing with students, we should train students in divine arts, right? Yeah, I'm worried about that. How are you going to do that? Ellen opened her eyes wide. Ha ha, it'll work out somehow. Can you trust me? That's not what I mean, Ellen prefaces. I trust him when it comes to pharmacy, but when it comes to divine arts, he always goes too far, I said. I need to reflect. While saying such things, Falma took it lightly. On the morning of the next day, Claude de Choriac, the Dean of Medicine and Chief Chamberlain, conducted a new exercise in human anatomy at the Imperial College of Medicine. Falma also attended this lecture and practical to give a joint lecture with Claude in the first year. Falma will give the lecture first and Claude will lead the anatomy exercises. Not only students but also professors came to visit. In addition, doctors, pharmacists and engineers may attend lectures by outsiders. Falma stood on the podium. And in front of the formal and fixed anatomical body standing on the dissection table in the center table of the three-tiered grand staircase, Claude stood upright in a white coat. Accompanying him is a young female doctor who serves as his assistant. I've given anatomy lectures several times before, but this is the first time I've met you in this classroom. Claude held a lecture baton-like faculty and spoke as he surveyed the students and professors. How about this classroom? It must be great. Claude spread his hands and boasted about his new classroom. Newly created by the university's restructuring, the Grand Staircase classroom was designed to be student-friendly, unlike the anatomy classrooms at other universities. As the name of the Grand Staircase Classroom suggests, the Anatomy Lecture Hall is a staircase classroom that resembles a small stadium. In addition, a pair of parabolic mirrors were installed to project the dissection table from the auditorium ceiling so that students could see the details of the dissected organs. 
and the size of the image was adjusted by the difference in focal length. The amplification method was designed so that the audience could see the dissection table larger when they looked toward the CE. Illing. In addition, the area around the dissection table with mirrors brightly captured the sunlight coming through the windows in the atrium. This was a device Alma suggested to an architect and had him create. Adjacent to the exercise room is the large staircase classroom, next to which students are expected to move and dissect the anatomical body. Then let's practice anatomy. This lecture and practice are mandatory. Students from all faculties of medicine, pharmacy and clinical laboratory were required to attend, and it was a lecture that even the students could not miss. I will do the practical training, but most of the lectures will be given by Professor De Medici's together. He knows a lot about anatomy, too. Claude points his cane at Falma. Thank you. Falma raised his hand to the podium and replied with a smile. Well, I'm not particularly bright, but I don't have anyone else to do it. To be clear, Falma, who was a pharmacist, had no idea about human anatomy. Nevertheless, I was able to create fairly accurate lecture materials on anatomy based on the knowledge I had gathered through animal studies and the human body materials I had copied into the PC I had retrieved from M the lab. After that, I will actually dissect the human body and ask Claude to explore the structure of the human body and demonstrate its functions. Organizations and departments can be freely named by them. Cut now. Operate now. And while I'm at it, I'll pull the prince's teeth right now. Claude was initially feared by Falma as a crazy psycho chief physician. But Chief Chamberlain, who has actually operated on, dissected, and seen the structures of countless human bodies, has a wealth of clinical experience and comparable to Falma's and is neither crazy nor wacky, just a bit of a disappointing doctor, according to Falma's recent impression. Therefore, Falma was relieved and decided to leave it to Claude. Now let's review the structure of the human body. The human body consists of the skull, the spine, and the upper and lower limbs. From here to here is the trunk, and here are the girdle of the upper and lower limbs. And you said free upper limbs and free lower limbs. Falma placed the skeleton and the specimen of the human body next to it and explained the structure and composition of the human body while showing it with a stick. Now the body is in front of Professor Sholyuk in the supine position. With the thumbs on the outside of the body, when the human body is bilaterally symmetrical, the plane of the axis of symmetry is called the median. Falma said while showing the specimen and sometimes Claude interjected. By the way, during the internship, there will be an autopsy for each of you too. Her Majesty Empress Elizabeth, who ordered the smooth arrangement of the death row inmates executed in the Empire, as well as the bodies of those who died due to unforeseen accidents. Be grateful to the corpse, pay tribute to the corpse, and study well. Claude asked the Empress to dissect a corpse for each student, but in reality it was difficult to get a corpse, so it was decided that two or three people would dissect a corpse. These cadavers were preserved over a period of almost a year and processed into preparations based on Professor de Medici's new preservation method. They can do a quick dissection. Claude said firmly that he would face the anatomical body with a different mindset than before. As Falma indicated, the human anatomy demonstration finally began after all the students had finished observing the body surface. Claude encouraged the students. None of us can teach you anything about the human body. Throw away all the textbooks written by any of the great doctors of the past. They are scraps of paper. As I said in my last lecture, anatomy is a blank slate. The answers are not in books but the answers of anatomy are in the human body. So let's dissect the human body and observe the truth. Claude cut the skin of the anatomical body with a knife. The beginning of dissection is the peeling away of the epidermis. As first-year students at Imperial College of Medicine, your first mission is to create the world's first fluoroscopic anatomical image of the human body. Students held their breath as they watched Claude's dissection demonstration. Therefore, I will be leading today's practice in place of Mr. Bonifoy, who has injured his shoulder. After finishing the morning anatomy lecture, 
Thelma made an announcement to the dozens of General Pharmacy students who had gathered in the arena after changing into workout clothes for the afternoon Divine Arts training. There are no commoners here because another instructor is in charge of the commoners' physical training. Ellen couldn't show up at the internship because she worked at the pharmacy instead of Thelma. You're lying. The students yelled when they saw that Thelma had arrived as the internship instructor. Professor Falma, a Divine Arts training class. Um, my stomach is starting to hurt. Some pull back to escape. Finally, there will be deaths. I'm being taken to the hospital. I need to call a doctor. It sounds horrible. Falma was reminded of the effects of the last Divine Arts battle on the students. There are many doctors over there in the research building, call one. The students who had witnessed Falma defeat Emmerich in the past were in turmoil as they recalled that time. Falma continued his tour while feeling low like he was being pecked by an old wound. Well, Mr. Bonifoy has asked us to do a real fight today, so as I said, we will start as a pair and warm up. Please, by all means have a divine art match. Professor. Emmerich, unfamiliar with the atmosphere, was not discouraged by this and asked Falma for a match. Ah, Herr Bauer, another chance. Falma didn't want to respond to the duel with Emmerich anymore, so he parried. Don't let it go, Professor. You and I don't get along well with the guardian gods, do we? Emmerich's guardian deity is a medicine god, so if he is careless with Falma, all of his divine power will be absorbed by Falma. It's not an exaggeration, Emmerich is just exhausted. Nevertheless, in any case, this time I've come up with about 20 strategies. Emmerich's eyes sparkle as if he's been thinking about the wrong strategy. He spends a lot of time in Falma's lab and is deeply entrenched in researching a new drug for fatal familial insomnia, so he probably wants to get rid of his lack of exercise every day. Wait a minute. A cocky student pushed Emmerich aside as if to say, I did it. Farmer Coon, you cheated on me the other day. Professor Falma, I'm a fire god and my patron god isn't a medicine god either. By all means, be my partner. Ah, uh, you ran away. While some of the students were trembling with fear, Falma also surrounded students with passionate appeals, so Falma waved his hands and set up a defensive line. Hey, I don't play matches because I had to replace it. I caused a lot of trouble in all directions. If I destroy the stage again, my father, the president of Medici's, will order me to fire him. Besides, my secretary Zoe will break down. But, then, when the students were embarrassed about what they were to learn in this practical training, Falma stared each student in the face. Today, after the actual battle, I think I should give you instruction on the parts of your divine arts that are sluggish. I made it a style to ask people with similar abilities to practice the divine arts in pairs and ask them if they had any problems. Then please enter the actual battle with the pair of people I specified. Farmer Kuhn with Olfan Kuhn, or a Kuhn with Benito Kuhn. Wrong opponents can lead to serious injuries. Falma decided on a pair after looking at the Enma book given to him by Ellen, which summarizes the divine qualities and abilities of the disciple. There are four stages for actual fights in the arena, and actual fights take place simultaneously on three stages. One stage was reserved for training. After confirming the rules and regulations of the game, students immediately started practicing. To avoid injury, it is used by inserting a spell to reduce the power of the divine ability on the staff. A magical formation to create partitions was used by a specialized engineer, and a divine battle began inside a blue cylindrical barrier-like wall. Falma actually got chills at the sight of this. Attempting god fights on college campuses and on stage to boot is unreasonable. Both spatially and tactically. If we stop using the natural environment, it won't be training. Falma supervised the actual fight, and while appreciating Ellen's and Macho, he thought deeply about it. Since there are no students who would break through the barrier of the magic circle, it is safe for now. Ah, uh, this child is not good at singing. This child is weak in defense after singing. If you stand still, you become a target. 
discover the practical problems of individual students. However, Falma's knowledge of the Battle of Divine Arts was obtained from Palin Ellen, and Falma himself is not an expert in divine arts. Nevertheless, even a layman can notice something. Somehow Falma was relieved that he was able to finish the match without any major injuries. Thank you for your hard work in the actual battle. Now I will tell you the individual problems I just saw in the battle, so please come one by one when your name is called. Students other than those called to participate in the self-study. Josephine Barrier. Yes, Professor. Josephine, a student with a veterinary license, was called in. It came rushing towards me with a big stick that did not fit my petite figure. Um, your problem is... You've mastered the basics of the divine arts, but it would be nice if you could do a little bit more with the divine arts, she said. During the actual battle, Josephine had only hit one type of divine technique. He survived the attacks with his skilled martial arts and wand techniques. It seems that the arm of divine art is not good enough. Yes, but I am worried about it. It's not that I can't use other divine techniques. However, the power of my divine techniques is very weak. That's why I can't use them in actual combat. I lose my confidence. There are some students who are good at the divine arts used to make the medicines necessary for apothecaries but are not good at fighting the divine arts. Josephine was such a student. Falma does not need to train an apothecary to fight, he thinks in his heart, but since it is a common university curriculum, the credits for practicing divine arts will be dangerous. Bonifois sensei told me to practice because I'm not good at summoning divine powers but I don't know what to do. She seemed to have some problems. I understand. Then please let me use this divine ability. Josephine is a veterinarian who uses divine arts with wind attributes and has the god of wind as her patron deity. I'm embarrassed because I'm tired. After looking embarrassed, I held up my cane. Josephine's hair and clothes are filled with wind. Tempe to do do vent. Josephine's divine technique was weak, so it was completely absorbed by the defensive wall of the divine art formation. Although it sang like a storm, there were only hairy things in the wind. She blushed at the eyes of the students around her. Falma noticed her divine ability and nodded. Are you afraid of releasing a large amount of divine power? Are you afraid of running out of divine power? Falma asked a few questions. Josephine's divine power is not small, and her veins are firmly open. However, it seems that he is a little hesitant to use divine power. Yes, maybe it's because I'm afraid of running out of divine power and don't have the confidence to control it. Then let's grasp the feeling of controlling divine power. Just hold your staff. Falma released the spell, raised her wand to the sky, and placed his hand on Josephine's back. Then he put his hand on her back and poured divine power into her veins. Let's go. By pouring his divine power into her, Thelma stimulates Josephine's veins and draws out her divine power. Tempe to do do vent. Then he chanted an accurate invocation chant at a moderate volume. And through Josephine's veins he transformed the divine power into a wind attribute divine ability in the form of controlling her body and released it into the sky as a complete divine ability. With a thunderous sound, a storm roared up to the sky, and the whirlwind cut off the cloudy sky and blew it away. The cold, brilliant sun in the winter sky peeked through the gaping clouds. 7. Josephine dropped her cane. Did you somehow understand the feeling of using divine arts, the method of generating divine power from the veins and rectifying it? Speechless, she nodded with her eyes wide open. From his staff, he unleashed a powerful divine ability he had never seen before. A picture is worth a thousand words and nothing beats an experience. It seems that your divine veins can persist even if you unleash a divine ability like this. If it's only once a day, you won't run out of divine power, it's fine. Then the students who were watching it did not shut up. Professor, please do the same for me. The students immediately rushed around Falma. Above all, there was something frightening about Emmerich, who aimed to become Falma's number one student. Professor. 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 There's a divine technique I want to use. Calm down, Mr. Farmer. 
Emmerich was insulted by other students. Falma, however, was attacked one by one by students. Please? I it's all right. Or rather, all the faces are close, face to face. One by one, one by one, until class time is over. Falma spared no effort in teaching. I'd like to try a high-level divine skill called Fleur de Glace. Oh, that's what Ellen did. Hold up your stick. I will try shooting a divine skill through your body. Yes, I will study. Students who want to challenge more advanced divine techniques than usual feel they can apply divine arts and divine techniques and master divine techniques one by one at Falma. The practice boomed. I invented another new magic trick. That's amazing, Professor. I couldn't do it even after a year of practicing. I couldn't do it for five years, so I gave up. Falma was the one most surprised by the happy expressions on the students' faces. Everyone is great. You've improved in just three lessons. And when Falma was impressed by the students' growth, I think the most amazing thing is that he is a professor who can freely use all the attributes in every divine technique. Josephine whispered. Ah, I think so. Falma laughed as she fooled me. I put myself back on the shelf. When the final bell rang, most of the students had mastered divine techniques they had never been able to do before. Perhaps because they were overjoyed with joy, they didn't want to leave the arena even after the practical. Don't be late for the next lecture. Yes, thank you for your guidance. The students thanked each other. I wonder if Ellen will be happy because everyone's divine abilities have improved. Falma thought so as she enormously complimented Ellen's and Macho. When I returned to the pharmacy and told Ellen about the content of the training and the progress of the students, Ellen. I mean, isn't it better for Falma Kuhn to do divine art training than for me to be the instructor? And with his glasses down, he smiled anxiously.